When Mike wasn't coming from just what I hear. Yes, sir. Uh, then you push it to Mike. Yeah. One of them listening to yeah. online is Louis Farrakhan. Um, about uh, the black man is the incarnation of God. Yes, sir. I already said that before. Yes, sir. And um, the next, yes. and another statement is that he said Elijah Muhammad is a prophet. Is a prophet of God. I already made that statement before as well. Yes, sir. So, the, so, so the first, so the first part of the question was in relation to the teaching of the nation of Islam, where the black man is equated with God, equated with God. So the black man is placed, you could say, on an equal footing with God. I think that's that's what he was alluding to. We don't we don't take one step back in retreat from that teaching and go saying, how do we justify this? In the Bible, for instance, the Creator says, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. So later on I see you with your little son and I come up to you and I say, your son looks just like you. Your son is the spitting image of you. In other words, I can see the relationship the you look like and he looks like you. So we believe in the nation of Islam that whatever God looks like, that's what man looks like. We believe that man and God is the same. That's why, for instance, in the scripture, whether it's Bible or Quran, he, Allah, is referred to as he, him. He sits, he sees, he hears. He speaks. He grieves. These are all emotions of human beings. The scripture says he is the supreme being. We are all human beings, but he is supreme among all of the human beings. The Bible says ye are all gods, children of the most high God. There is only one supreme God. But we are all his children. So in that regard, we see ourselves, as, as especially as original people, original men, we see ourselves as coming directly in a line of divine from God himself. We don't make no separation between ourselves and God. In the Holy Quran, in the Holy Quran, in the Holy Quran, Almighty God Allah says, I am closer to man than your life vein or your jugular vein. How can Allah be closer to you and me than our life vein, our very jugular vein, if he has not made himself a part of man? Almighty God Allah revealed through Jibreel to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, didn't say, I am the messenger of Jibreel. He says, I am the messenger of Allah. Because even though Allah used the conduit called Jibreel, it is still the undiluted revelation of God. And so we don't make any separation uh, between ourselves. Now your second point. You said that you heard the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teaching that Elijah Muhammad is a prophet. Sorry? Well, you know, I mean, I'm not going to do it to and fro, but let me, let, me, let, me go to the, let me go to the second point. You said you heard the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teaching that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is a prophet. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has never in the history of the teachings of the nation of Islam uttered any such word. I can tell you that as a fact. We have never ever called the Honorable Elijah Muhammad a prophet. We refer to him as the messenger of Allah. There is a difference between Rabbi and Rasul. There is a difference between messenger and prophet. We are not living in the time of prophets. We are living in the time of the fulfillment of all prophecy. And we believe that this man, Elijah Muhammad, we believe this is the one that the whole world 
talks about, but has no knowledge about, we believe this man is the Christ. We believe, I want you to hear what I'm saying, brother, because I'm not, we don't waste, we, yeah, we're not going to waste a lot of time with these things. We believe that this man is the Christ. We believe that this man is the man who comes with Al Mahdi. We believe that Farad Muhammad, Farad Muhammad, the one who came from the holy city of Mecca in the year 1930 to us in North America, we believe him to be the Mahdi. This is what we believe. Now, 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 if you don't believe that, if you don't believe that, that's fine. No. It's irrelevant. And I say this to the Muslims, to the Orthodox world of Muslims who don't believe like we believe. If we are mistaken, if we are wrong, if we are practicing shirk, then that means that Almighty God Allah will punish us. If we are in deviation, from the Sunnah, from the Sarat al Mustaqim, the straight path of God, then Allah, He says in the book, I am the judge, and I will determine who is the believer and who is the disbeliever. So, what I would advise to all Orthodoxy who don't like the nation of Islam, who believe that we are, you know, some crazy people with bow ties and suits talking nonsense, leave the Leave the nonsense people alone. Be intelligent. Go to your masjid. Do your prayer. Do your fast. Do your uh, uh, charity. Do all of these things. Hold on. Let me let me finish. Do all of these things that you believe is your deen. But don't waste a lot of time trying to convert us because we have already been converted. In fact, we weren't converted. We reverted back to our nature because we were Muslims from the beginning but we were beaten out of that in 400 years of slavery